I think in Singapore, we're really afraid to take up space. People do have a lot of this self-awareness that if you do something that another person might be watching or that you're always constantly uh, having to think to be like, oh, you know, should I do that? Should I not do that? Am I being too loud? Am I taking up too much space? The empty body, I would say, is quite relaxed and free of tension. The Buddha dancer has been described as like, you know, a corpse that's sort of barely standing upright. It's not because we're trying to be scary or have this kind of like grotesque sort of quality, but you know, the empty body is more about releasing one's sense of self, emptying yourself out of your ego. There is a line that extends from the heavens to down past the crown of your head, past your centre line, and down into the core of the earth. So your body is connecting to a sense of floating and sinking at the same time. So when you Google Bhutto, the first thing that you'll see is usually like a bald person or some maybe like half naked, like covered in white paint. Some say that the painting represents Bhutto's idea of the dissolving of the self and uh, from personal experience, I do feel that when I paint, that I become nothing and that I'm erasing like a part of myself. I found Bhutto about a couple of years ago when I was living in New York. Uh, I think I was still in my 20s then. <laughs> I think only became a serious practitioner after I moved back to Singapore. I mean, like, society has always had beauty standards and things like that. Being a Bhutto dancer can be very liberating in a world where, you know, the human body is uh, subject to a lot of standards. And so from even things like not looking a certain way or even being judged for your weight or your body type and things like that, uh, all those things are inconsequential when it comes to Bhutto dance. I think a lot of Bhutto is about forgetting, like forgetting who you are, forgetting like where you come from, your name, your gender, your just pure movement, you know, pure sensation. And I, I think that's kind of the, the power of it as well, yeah. I think I grew up like pretty comfortable, you know, like Chinese Singaporean family, relatively privileged, went to an all-girls school. So, you know, on paper, everything seems good and well. And But I think by nature, I've always been a little bit of like a willful child. And, you know, something about this traditional, typical sort of environment definitely provoked in me like a certain sort of restlessness, dissatisfaction with how things were. My parents are also quite religious. Like, my mom is like really Christian and my dad is uh, a Taoist medium as well. I think definitely because of how Bhutto appears, my parents might be quite put off or scared off by it. You know, because of the religious sort of uh, influence, they might also kind of see it as uh, shamanic or something like that. My Dad probably doesn't know that I do Bhutto. Both of them know that I'm a kind of a strange child. I think with the tattoos, you kind of can't really avoid that anymore. So yeah, I think that perhaps they've made a decision not to acknowledge it yet, even though it's such a clear presence in my life. I think that I'm, if anything, I'm hiding in plain sight, which actually is a really beautiful thing about Bhutto as well. Like we are hiding in plain sight.
Buto teachers in Singapore at the moment that are teaching regularly. This community or movement doesn't quite exist here at the moment. And so I share it through uh, my classes because in a very selfish way, uh, I need it. Uh, I need Buto to be alive in my life and to have a community or an environment around me that has that. And so this is why I push forward with it. You know, when you have something that you care about so much that is precious to you and you are able to share it, obviously there is this fear that whoever you're showing it to might hate it or not be responsive to it because of some failure on your part. But I think whenever I talk about Buto, whenever I share Buto, I, I'm really just saying like, here's something that I love and these are the ways in which I know to love it. And, you know, I hope that somewhere in all of that, that somebody will see something uh, precious about it as well. Yeah.